What's up and welcome back if you've been here before. If you're new here, I'm Hannah. I'm a photographer and video creator. And this week I want to dive into Lightroom. So this is part of a bigger series that I'm doing to help you become a better photo editor. So in the last episode in this series, I talked about the histogram and making basic corrections in Lightroom. This week I want to dive into the tone curve. So the tone curve is another graph within Lightroom and it represents all of the tones within your image. And so when you make adjustments on the tone curve, you're globally affecting the overall look and feel of your photo. I think the tone curve in Lightroom is one of the more powerful tools that we have at our disposal when we're editing in Lightroom itself. And I think this for a few reasons, mainly because it's again, affecting the global look and feel of your photo by taking away and adding colors. And you also have really finite control over highlights, darks, shadows, lights, that whole thing. But let's dive into Lightroom so that you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. So the first thing I'm gonna do in this image is crop it and get it to a place where I would actually use it. So straightening out that horizon line first and foremost. That is looking good. And now I'm just gonna move down into my basic corrections panel as if I was actually editing it. And if you caught the last video in the series, you know I don't usually affect or change the white balance in post. I normally like to get that as close to real life as possible when I'm shooting the photo in the first place. So I just like to make these basic adjustments in terms of shadows and contrast and things like that. Also usually bump down that clarity to give it that creamy and ethereal look. So scrolling down to our tone curve, this is our graph right here. And so from the left to right, we have our shadows all the way to the left, darks, and then we move over to our lights and then our highlights over here. So it might be a little redundant or you might say, why are we making these changes if we can just make these changes in the basic corrections panel? But this allows for a more finite adjustment to your photo. It allows you to manipulate specific areas of your photo and really just changes the overall tonal range, altering the mood, the contrast, and just visual impact of the photo itself. So typically the first two points I adjust in my tone curve are down here in the shadows and also in the highlights. So I flatten my highlights typically by bringing them down and I lift my shadows by bringing this point up down in the darkest parts of my photo. I usually like to keep that pretty subtle and then from there I'll go in and create an S curve within my tone curve. And this type of curve I just find creates a really well balanced image and a well balanced histogram. So you can see that the adjustments are really slight but it really is affecting those tones and the overall mood of the photo. So I will toggle this on and off for you to see. And again, these types of edits within the tone curve allow for more finite manipulation of these different parts of your photo. You can already see here that the definition in the mountains is starting to come a little bit more to life because we are bringing away the attention from this part of the photo and making sure that the viewer's eye goes here to the center of the mountains. And so that's just one of the tone curves I use and honestly it's the one that I gravitate towards most because I find it best represents and best achieves, I guess, what I'm looking for in a photo, which is typically a more filmic type of edit, especially if I'm out in nature or you have very vast landscapes like this photo of the mountains. And you can really play around with this. So creating a tone curve is totally personal style. So I recommend after this video, going into Lightroom and experimenting with the tone curve yourself. You can literally point, put, you can literally put points anywhere on this tone curve to achieve whatever sort of look you're going for. And that's really the best way to learn. So let's dive into the RGB tone curves. I feel like this is another scary part, just like the histogram. Um, within Lightroom, I feel like as a beginner photographer, I definitely didn't touch this. I never touched the RGB tone curve. I had no idea what it did and I was just like, nope, I'm good. I'm gonna stick to what I know. <laughs> And as soon as I started using this tool in Lightroom, especially the RGB tone curves, my photos changed. The look and feel totally changed and I was able to really hone in on my style of editing. So reminder, this graph, like the histogram, is not big and scary. I'm gonna show you how you can best use it and get the most out of these RGB tone curves. So this is the red channel of our RGB tone curve. And when I put a point here, you're gonna notice as I pull that point up, 
it is adding red to the image. And then I will go ahead and bring that point down and it takes away the red and adds the opposite, which is cyan. So it increases or decreases the amount of pixels of a given tone. So in this case, I'm showing you that it is decreasing the red pixels and adding blue. So similarly to what I mentioned when I was talking about the regular tone curve that controls your shadows, your darks, your highlights, and your lights, you can do the same sort of manipulation in the RGB tone curves. So you can put points wherever you want on this graph to achieve whatever look and feel you're going for. So you can see here with just a single point in the blue channel of the RGB tone curves that this image is starting to really warm up. And because I'd say 50% of this photo is the shadows, adding just a single point really warmed up the entire photo. So I'll toggle this on and off. So this is off, obviously looking a little bit more on the cooler blue magenta -y side and then toggled back on, you can already see it's starting to warm up and really come to life. It's giving road trip vibes, which is what I'm after. Almost like Forrest Gump, you know? So. I'm gonna go ahead and just balance this out and get it to a place where I feel visually looks good. I always say this, but editing is so subjective based on your style and also on what you're looking to achieve with the colors in your photo. Are you trying to achieve a warmer look and feel? Are you trying something more cinematic? Are you editing reds or blues? It's going to change based on the subject subjective. So I'm kind of liking where this is at and we have two other channels to manipulate. So pro tip for you, once you get one channel situated in a place that you like, you can copy and paste settings. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here on this graph. You can copy channel settings and then you can go in and paste them on the other channels. So I will paste that same exact tone curve on the green channel of my tone curve and then same on my red channel. This streamlines the tone curve editing process so much. I can't even describe to you. This has cut so much time off of my editing, especially because I find that having three similar tone curves really balances my image out. But this photo specifically is still looking a little bit more blue. So I'm going to go back into those yellow channels and add a bit more yellow in. And you can see just by a very slight tweak in those shadows, it's warming up the image and it's looking really, really good. So as one final show of what we did here today, I'm gonna toggle this on and off and personally, I think this is night and day. So this is off and before any adjustment was made within the tone curve and this is after the tone curve. And typically when I'm editing, I start in the basic corrections panel and then I work my way down through the tone curve and then all of the different panels in Lightroom. Once I do that, I will then go back and make tweaks. So this tone curve that I showed you today, when we edit more next time, when we're talking in the HSL panel, I will probably go back and make some tweaks here. It's just how I edit and it's what works for me. Again, editing is so subjective. It's subjective on place, on the person editing, on the mood that you want to achieve, on your editing style, so many different things. So it's really not one size fits all type of thing. So maybe you're gonna apply this exact tone curve to a photo that you're editing right now and it might not work. And that's just kind of how editing goes. It's the same thing with presets. Presets really aren't a one size fits all type of thing. But I promise you, if you start editing with your tone curves, it is going to change your photos and up level them in an entirely new way. So I hope this video gave you a bit more clarity around the tone curve and how to navigate it and how to use it to affect the global look and feel of your photos. If by chance you already use tone curves, I would love to know in the comments below what shape, if it's like an S or like a U or whatever shape it is, what shape your tone curve typically takes, like what you gravitate towards most because like I showed you, I typically gravitate towards more of an S curve, but I'm always wanting to learn more and experiment with different tone curves. So 
let me know. And stay tuned because next time in this series, I'm gonna be breaking down the color mixer. And the color mixer in Lightroom controls hue, saturation, and luminance of all the colors in your photo. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.